not every day that you hear about a teenager with millions of dollars at their fingertips. No, we're not talking about a movie star in LA or a country singer in Nashville. We're talking about a teenager here in Utah whose new technology is one of the most highly anticipated drones coming this summer. I I'm missed at. you and I missed everyone else, so I'm glad that they're joining us this evening. You really miss this place though, don't you? I do, I love this place. Yeah, it's so doesn't? good to be back here. Absolutely. It's gonna be a really fun night. Before we get into the rest of the information related to tonight, we want to remind you that Minnesota North Stars alums Don Beaupre, Neil Broughton, Jack Carlson. Filming a racing event with a drone is nothing new. Fans of Formula One, NASCAR, and MotoGP are used to seeing things from an aerial perspective, but at a distance. There's an ongoing international racing series that is being documented at incredible speeds and frightening proximity. Oh my gosh! Do you know Santa? Yes, I know who he is. If you tell him what I want for Christmas, I'll give you this. What I want for Christmas? What I want for Christmas. I don't know. What do you want for Christmas? Can't tell anyone. I can't. I, I didn't hear you. <laughs> oh, well, that's embarrassing. So, um, that's okay. I'm still gonna give you this salted nut roll from Pearson's My Tuesday. Yes, you know, I feel like the Debbie Downer in the room after this really exciting win, but like all good things, this Fox Sports North box office buyout must come to an end, but you tell everybody how you did today. Well, I did good. I feel really happy about it. I got fourth place. That's amazing! High five! Dakota. The, the coyotes. It's the coyotes. Yes, either way, they're gonna be dead on the ice tonight. <laughs> It'll be fine. I wanna know why you decided you wanted to fly backwards, because that's not instinctual. You're winning qualifiers for drone nationals, and you've only been flying for a year. Yes. You realize that's not like totally normal, right? No. <laughs> why are your shoelaces always untied? Oh, because I didn't pay attention in the kindergarten. It's really hard for me to tie them. You're blaming kindergarten on this? Who else? Me? I guess. You love your drone. So do we. But do you know how they came about? We're taking a look at where they came from, how they've been used, and explain why they're here to stay. I do indeed. One player that's been making a huge difference since in Minnesota since her returning at the beginning of February is Amanda Kessel. The senior has been making a difference since she started, but that was quite a while ago, and if you ask her, it's been a whirlwind of a career. All right, thanks guys. I'm down here with Coach Frost. And Coach, it was very reminiscent of last night. You guys came out hungry right off the bat, scored two goals in the first five minutes of the game. How much did you preach that in the locker room? How important that fast start was for you guys? The team, also known as the Miracle on Ice, unveiled a new 11-foot statue of the iconic coach last night, just down the block from XL Energy Center. This last week was the second annual Inner Drone, the world's largest commercial drone expo, where over 4,000 attendees learned about the latest and saw the great greatest innovations in the commercial drone market. And tonight, being here at the City Gala, raising money for kids who maybe wouldn't have had an opportunity otherwise, what does that mean to you? That means a lot. I, you know, I, I consider it just a, a part of what every human being should do. I gotta say, I love your kicks. Thank you, I love them too. I mean, what was the inspiration behind those things? The screen, I actually, it's so easy to do. I pulled it up right now on my little tablet here. You can download the app on almost any kind of phone or tablet that you have. And I think what people don't understand is that it's a free service. You're right. already paying for your TV plan. Why not use this free service that we have? It's you a can party. And if you don't have skates, not an excuse not to come out. They've got skates inside available for renting. If you're afraid of the cold, why are you in Minnesota? It's actually a beautiful night out tonight. We'd love It was just supposed to be a cup of coffee two professors, one an ecologist, the other conservation biologist, discussing the effects the palm oil industry was having on the orangutan population in Southeast Asia. The two agreed, studying animals in the tropics is a very difficult task, one that takes a lot of time and financial resources. That got them thinking, what if there was a better way to study their subjects? Now, orangutans make a nest every night, and we thought if you can fly over the forest and make photos of those, ne of those nests that would help enormously. And then we started to think about using drones as sort of a flying camera, if you like, to, to get us those data. And that's sort of how the idea was, was founded. Serge Vick is a professor of primal biology at John Moores University. He and ecology and conservation professor Leanne Pinco started using drones to study orangutans and tropical deforestation in February 2012. That's when they flew a $2,000 custom-made fixed-wing drone in North Sumatra, Indonesia. 
they say the UAV gathered thousands of high-quality aerial images and footage of forests and wildlife. An online news source ran a story about their work, focusing on the new, low-cost technology, dubbing the aerial project a conservation drone. Shortly after, conservationdrones.org was founded. At first, in, in, in 2011, people were a little bit hesitant. Even so, some of our colleagues thought, like, why are these guys just playing with drones? This is just something they, they, they like flying or something. They must not be, <clears throat> it will probably not lead to anything. But then gradually, as we were, were showing some results, people started to, to pay more attention to it. The nonprofit has over a dozen crew members based around the world. Dr. Vick says that they have between 10 and 30 projects going on at all times. With the addition of easy to use 3DR and DJI products, learning to fly is easy. The trickier part is teaching others how to use the data they've collected. Both Leon Pin and myself are trying to bring a lot of that drone teaching to our universities, uh, <clears throat> where we both train students now to, to not only use drones, but also to really focus on what do you do with the data. Universities, zoos, and research foundations support the nonprofit, using the data they collect to study primates, cetaceans, deforestation, and more. Their mission is to help developing tropics use UAVs for conservation and help raise public awareness of conservation challenges. Sharing footage with locals is one way of doing that. It's really amazing to, to show the footage to them of, of the, the forests that are next door to their villages and, and to try to give them an appreciation for, for those forests from that point of view and, and, and show them that those are the areas where the animals are from a, from a different angle. And I think by, by visualizing sort of forests in a different way, we can also hopefully make it more uh, attractive for them to, to protect those areas. This unassuming office building in Salt Lake City is where Teal CEO George Matus is sending out to follow his dream, sharing his love of flight with the world. This is our main room when you walk into the office, and welcome by the way. Thank you. <laughs> we just moved in here about two weeks ago, so we're still getting furniture set up. So this is kind of like the smiley face. Yeah, this exactly. Is the front this is of the, the uh, this is the civilized side of the company with software and <laughs> project management and marketing. Then we've got the hardware guys on the other side. They can go crazy. They they go crazy. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. George is great. He definitely has a vision of where like he wants to take Teal, and that's like very clear in his head. And we're headed there. Every now and then. The 18-year-old or the 19-year-old comes out in him, <laughs> but he's fun, and he's he's got a, a good business mind about him. Now I have to see um, these cups that are on the video. <laughs> so that was that was around Christmas time. Uh, <laughs> Which do you prefer, Hannah Montana or so, World's Best? So Seth Fox? and I are big Office fans, the TV show. So he got that cup. Uh, around Christmas time, which I love. And then Bob, I made the mistake of telling that I went to a, a Hannah Montana concert when I was like 10 years old. Because she was uh, a oh, babe he's back laughing. then. Oh, he's laughing. She was like the <laughs> yeah, babe. Yeah, exactly. So he got me a, a Hannah Montana cup, and it's awesome. <laughs> that is great. George has a few things in common with his childhood crush, Miley Cyrus. They both had big dreams at a young age and dads who could help them navigate the industry. He's been an entrepreneur for a long time um, and he's definitely been an inspiration in me wanting to start up my own thing and, and start a business. That's where the bug comes from, yeah. the entrepreneurship bug. Yeah, I mean, I think I've always had that um, in addition to this passion of flight. Uh, but, you know, when I was about 11 years old, I was doing hot chocolate stands and lemonade stands. In the winter, I had this full hot chocolate stand with like marshmallows and hot chocolate and donuts and this guy drives up and he's like, I want to buy your entire stand. I work with your dad, so drive with me to my office. Uh, take all this stuff and I'll give you 60 bucks. I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> so I don't even ask my parents. I jump in the car with him. Uh, turns out he actually did work with my Oh my, with my word, dad. I was like, this could go so <laughs> No, so I, I sold my entire stand. I got $60 from that. I was ecstatic and then got grounded for like three months after that. He did everything you're not supposed to do. He went missing. He absolutely went, you know, we couldn't, we, we didn't know where he was. Although excited about entrepreneurship, George Sr. says it's always been about love of flight for his son. I, I think he was flying since he was two months old. You know, we saw him flying at, at a really early age. It didn't make sense that there was smoke coming out of the basement. <laughs> With, you know, he was like 10 years old, and I go down there and he's soldering mm -hmm. stuff. He's got like, a soldering how do you even mask know how on. To do this? How do you know how to do this? You know, uh, 12, you know, midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., just put a sandwich there on the, 
doorstep, right? And I spent probably half of my life in Home Depot with George, you know, just, just buying equipment and stuff. His dad says that by the age of 11, George was test flying RC helicopters for companies. By 14, he had built a drone that exceeded 100 miles per hour. At 16, he had built a small drone with a computer on board, the original Teal, and was presenting at Stanford University alongside Google and Apple. That was a really, really neat thing. That really helped kickstart George's dreams and help take things to another level. By the end of 2015, George had raised $2.8 million in seed funding. No, I mean, it, it's funny because I, you know, I, I walked into these meetings with braces, no driver's license, my dad was driving me around. I was a junior in high school and I was asking for millions of dollars. Right. <laughs> and, and like, you know, once I started talking about, you know, the potential and my passion and, and what I've done so far, like, I felt I was taken seriously and, and people, people considered it. A few months later, he was able to close his first serious round of funding. COO Billy McGuire was George's first hire. The father of five was willing to leave stability and hop on board with the teenager's vision. So at the time, George had some theses of kind of where he wanted to go with it, but really it was George. It was meeting him, talking to him, and feeling his enthusiasm and, and being able to say, you know what, I think this guy's got something. I think that jumping on board with him uh, he's going to he's gonna do something incredible and do something great. And so it was really him. Because at the time, there wasn't a product really to, to latch on to. It was, just, it was just George. Now George has around 20 full-time employees. Does that ever, I don't know, does that ever weigh on you? Because not a lot of 19-year-olds, I would say 97, 90, no, 99% of 19-year-olds don't have to worry about that. No, well, I mean, I think it's, it's uh, a little bit of, of two different things. One is, you know, perspective. Uh, graduated from high school now, and so this is this is normal, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't feel normal. unusual anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, uh, working at a startup and and um, you know going through this entire process. And, and, but I think the second half of it is, you know, been thrust into the situation uh, without much time to reflect or think about what's happening, but just always looking forward and, and to what needs to happen to to you know stay alive. Um, I, I like that you think this is normal. I'm like, well, gosh, I mean, I was went to college and then was like, oh, I don't know what I want to do with my life. <laughs> and you've had this one track vision since you were 15 or 16 years old. Uh, that I would say that would make you a pretty humble person. Have you heard that before? No, thank you. I mean, yeah, <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I mean, I try my best and, and this has just been, you know, the most exciting journey. Um, and you mentioned college, you know, I graduated from high school, but because of that Thiel Fellowship, mm -hmm. you know, they're an advocate of this motto that, you know, some ideas just can't wait. Right. So instead of going to college and working to get a degree, you know, why not spend that time getting actual real world experience and building a project, building a company and getting out there. Um, and so that was, you know, that was a big motivator in, in deferring college for a little mm -hmm. bit. I think I, I might still go, um, but for now it's just Teal full steam ahead.